Hey everybody, it's Ben here, and right next to me is the Ford Ranger EV. This is an electric pickup truck that we just saved from getting sent off to a scrapyard. Um, I got it home, uh, did a little video tour of it the other day, and what I wanna do now is show you how to charge it. So on this truck, the charge port is on the front, uh, similar to say like a Nissan Leaf or a Kia Soul EV. So we just open up this port, we take our standard electric car charger and oh my God, it doesn't fit. I can't plug that in. Um, it looks like it's something totally different. In fact, it is. You have to remember that this car was back from the EV1 era, uh, the time period of uh, who killed the electric car and it used a completely different type of a charging port. So thankfully when I got this truck, it did come with the correct charging equipment so I have here something called an Avcon connector. Um, it is conductive, just like the J1772 that we use today, um, but it's a little bit uh, different size and shape. So what this does is it's this boxy thing. It goes in here, hard to do left-handed and backwards, right-handed and backwards. So it goes in here and then the whole thing swivels down and snaps into place and then it'll start charging. But before we do that, uh, let's take a look at the charging equipment that I have for this and then we'll start it charging up. So right here, this big white post thing, uh, this behemoth, it's uh, about four feet tall, uh, plastic enclosure, uh, is what came with the truck for charging equipment. So if you look on the left, you know, it's, it's kind of similar. There's a holster and a gun um, and the cord going down in there. So that's not unlike what, what we're used to using. Uh, in fact, when I look at this, it appears that originally it was actually designed for two. If we look down here, there was a spot um, for another hook for hanging the cord. Uh, clearly right here, the holster from over here is missing. It was originally there, but now is gone. And the big tip off on this one is if we open it up clearly, there's the waterproof connections for not one, but two cords on here. And clearly spots for two sets of 40 amp, uh, 240 volt breakers. And the other clue is also with the truck. I got this box right here and this box is kind of mysterious. I think what it was is somebody tried to build kind of a portable EVSC. Um, but didn't have it wired up right. Uh, these breakers, they're GE brand, and they're the same style, which is in this box right here. Uh, the other interesting thing about this is it's wired up with a NEMA 1450 connection, 240 volt, 50 amp cord, which is great because I can plug that right into the wall in my garage. And the other end of this is another Avcon connector, although this one is broken. It has a broken tab right here, and the cover that's supposed to slide up and down is missing. But if you look here, you can see a couple of connections. So we've got two hots, a ground, and this one up here is a, a signal pin. Now that's a little bit different from the modern J1772 though, uh, because that one would have two pins. The other one is proximity or a, a plug present uh, kind of a connection. I do not see that on here. So I wonder if uh, this older version of J1772 simply did not have that. I don't know. Can't tell you that offhand. Um, also, uh, this connector um, looks a little bit different than the other one on that charging post. So I don't know if maybe this one originally was on that charging post and a previous owner took it off to try to build kind of a a portable EVSC, um, but basically inside of this box, it's got the power coming in, the breaker and the power coming out, but there's no kind of signal or control. And that's part of what's in these boxes as safety features, is it's, it's the signal that says you're properly plugged in before it turns on the power, everything like that. So the other thing with this one is, it is also wired up with a NEMA 1450 uh, connection. I've just got that plugged in right here to my little uh, kind of remote control box, which also has a panel meter built in. So if I turn it on, now we can take our plug 
unhook it and go charge the truck. So on this connection is that plate and it's spring loaded and it slides so that when this is hooked in here, pushing it down slides that plate out of the way and the whole thing uh, kind of swings up to make the connection. So now it's locked in place and I heard the contactor and the EVSE kick on. I'll start hearing, hearing a few uh, clicks and things from the truck and let's go over to see how much power it's pulling. So I can hear the fan from the battery charger in the truck. Uh, the battery charger is air cooled. It's kind of the big thing right under the hood and we hear that fan cranking away. We're pulling 22 amps, um, over 5,000 watts. Not bad, it's certainly a faster charging rate than my Mitsubishi iMev electric car, which only charges at a little over 3,000 watts. So it's pretty exciting that this truck actually runs and drives. It works as it's supposed to. It also charges properly and at a pretty decent rate. And the equipment to charge it came with uh, would be a little bit of a challenge to get it to charge otherwise right now. But it looks like these charging systems are compatible. So I'll actually be able to build some sort of an adapter so I can keep the stock charging port on here, uh, but design something that I can charge from public modern electric car charging stations. In fact, here is a device that I built uh, to charge my Vectrix electric motorcycle from public J1772 stations. So I'm excited about all this. Uh, still, before anything else, I have to find a lithium battery I can put in here, um, some sort of a BMS to work with it. Um, I don't know where I'm getting the battery from or even how I'm funding it, um, but we'll figure that out as we go. Um, so as always, I hope you enjoy these videos. Please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, check out the blog at 300mpg.org. We're also now on Patreon. So if you want to help support this sort of thing, make projects like this happen and videos about them, uh, we'd love to have your support on Patreon as well. Um, I might see about shooting some thermal video of the charger running. So under the hood, uh, the big silver thing in the middle right here, uh, that is actually the charger. Around it are some other components like the DC to DC converter and uh, various connectors. Some of those things are liquid cooled, but I think as you can hear the fan right now, uh, the battery charger is actually air cooled. There's some heat sink fins coming down from it. You really can't see them here, but they're, they're fins similar to what you see on this component, uh, but they face down and there's a fan hidden back underneath there. Uh, so I'm going to get out my thermal camera. Let's see if we can see what this looks like by thermal. So here I got out my thermal camera so we can take a look at the, uh, take a look at the charger while it's running. So under the hood, um, things are warmer than outside the vehicle. Keep in mind it's winter, it's cold. You can actually see the cord itself is just a little bit warmer. Not that I can really feel, but it's relatively warmer than its surroundings anyways. Uh, actually, you can see the plastic's pretty cold. My hand's pretty warm. So I'll, I'll actually leave like a, a heat mark on there. So if we look up under the hood, uh, it's pretty obvious which component the charger is because it, it's the warm one. Now these thermal imagers aren't perfect like this part that looks really bright, that's actually because it's kind of a, a reflective sticker. Um, even right now, oh wow, you can actually see my reflection of heat in the smooth, shiny surface up here. That's kind of cool. Uh, but where you really notice the heat the most is kind of down along this bottom. Oh, it is warm. I can actually feel that. It's just a little warmer right along here. It's it's air cooled, so there's the fins are kind of down on this edge. They're pretty hard to see. I can definitely feel the air being uh, blown through there. I mean, it's enough air that I can feel it. The air does not feel especially warm, but again, I mean, it's cold outside. Uh, and what you see on the video screen here, this is all essentially relative. So, I mean, it's definitely not getting hot, not that you ever would want it to be. But anyways, there's your nice little uh, thermal video of the charger inside the truck.
Until next time, stay charged up. We hope you liked this video. If you did, please comment, share, like, and subscribe. Come on over and check out the blog at 300mpg.org. We're also now on Patreon and would love your support there. We'll see you next time.